I just MailChimp my marketing. You MailChimp your what? I MailChimp my marketing with AI to create an effective marketing campaign in minutes. No, MailChimp and Way. Yes, MailChimp and Way. Now I can hyper personalize my campaigns across email and SMS. You can do all that with MailChimp. What did I just MailChimp and say? MailChimp your marketing with the number one AI powered email marketing and automation platform, Intuit MailChimp. Number one, based on publicly available data on competitors' customers. Plans vary. SMS available as add ons. Visit MailChimp.com. ABC Wednesday. Y'all can play all day. We want books. We want paper towels in the classroom. Bet you want raises too. I'm Honey. still waiting on the paper towels. Abbott Elementary returns with the new season. We asked the district for more after school programs. They gave us $50 for class pets instead. Critics cheer. Abbott Elementary continues to be one of the funniest and most beloved shows on TV. What y'all doing out there? Taking bribes. Proud of y'all. Abbott Elementary. Season premiere Wednesday, 9 30, 8 30 Central on ABC and stream on Hulu. If you have a question about paint, your Benjamin Moore retailer knows all. You need Regal Select and an eggshell finish and directions to the post office. Benjamin Moore paint is only sold at locally owned stores. Benjamin Moore, see the love. Hey, Matt, we are back with another episode of Weird Algorithm. We're talking about the seventh Al TV special uh, from number seven. number seven from 1996. And this is a unique one for us, Matt. We've basically always had a guest on an Al TV episode, but every single time it's usually been a friend of ours who's involved in sketch comedy and we kind of just pick an episode and throw it at them and they're like jumping in blind. This is the yes. first time anyone has specifically said, I have to talk about this specific Al TV episode. <laughs> so UH Jeff, Hi. we basically let you do whatever the hell you want when it comes to our show. <laughs> we really do, guys. I'll tell you what, he came late today. Yeah. He had a whole big thing. It was <laughs> but U UH Jeff runs the show. Yeah. We're just here. Actually, we're just uh, here for him. If you don't mind, I'm gonna take a call real quick. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, by all means, yeah. Oh, no, wow. really, is that why you yeah. <laughs> Our Is that why you wanted to be on this episode? Was just Wait for that prop? <laughs> <laughs> I brought prop comedy for the uh, audio for the podcast. podcast for our audio only <laughs> podcast. Wait a minute! 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 <laughs> Stop everything. <laughs> Good morning. Is that is that real? Is that what that is that is? This is, this oh is officially God. the prop. From Al TV, it's the Komoda phone, which we'll I'm sure talk about in depth later. Yeah, uh, we're gonna. Oh my god! Well, now we definitely are. I certainly had it written in my notes, but that's I did not expect that. Oh my god! I um, man, wow. I I did not anticipate that being. Yeah, I was gonna be like, you know, this was the first and possibly the only Al TV I watch live. Is that the case for you as well, Jeff? Like, nope. <laughs> That's way cooler. <laughs> no, you had Jeff swinging for the fences. God damn. <laughs> right away. So I <laughs> nailed it. I'm going to say a hot take about this Al TV special. Yes. Yeah, right sure. out the gate, though. Do it. Al, yeah. all the love in the world to you. This feels it's like. It's not his fault. This feels, <laughs> this feels like the lowest budgeted Al TV special <laughs> that has ever existed. And they are infamously low budget. Yeah, like I mean, this. They, they usually are. That I'm yeah. confident that there is 15 minutes <laughs> of new content <laughs> that all feels like it was shot in a day or two. Just on like oh, a random I'd... weekend in LA. <laughs> like, yeah. Not even a day. What, like two hours? Yeah, maybe? Like, maybe. I mean, there are um, there are different locations, which actually. Th there are two locations, for, at least it, two for sure. Yeah. <laughs> somehow makes um, it double the budget of the three, other. I would yeah, say yeah, three yeah, locations. The there's three locations. There's a tattoo parlor. There's this. Oh, right. the tattoo parlor. <laughs> there's this, I forgot about the tattoo parlor. There's this hotel roof, and there's Bill's office. Those are. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I wrote so my <laughs> hold on a second. I have to clarify this now. My very last note was why why is Green Jelly and Bill Mann's speaker thanked in the closing credits? That's who yeah. Bill's office was. <laughs> this, I just had that realization in this minute. That um, is his friend Bill. God damn, I'm his an good okay. friend Bill, yeah. Bill so, Mann's speaker. But he also eats green jello yeah, in this, this is episode. Like, mm-hmm. 
He, he puts well, he it does. on the sandwich. He, lime jello. It's lime jello. Yes. Um, which is, yeah, it is green. <laughs> Excuse me. But I, You're right. <laughs> legally safe. But yeah, I was like, I feel like even the bumpers that we get in this one, not the polka bumpers, but the other bumpers mm -hmm. are all reused from the last Al Music Canadian special. Like, it yeah. is... Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely some stuff. Is, I mean, there, there, I mean, I would <clears throat> chalk this up. I, I would, I chalk this up to just time, right? It just seems to me like this was something that they had to make in a very, very small amount of time, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> then it looks like it was the rooftop of a hotel. I don't know if Al was staying in that hotel. It's Los Angeles, so probably not. Yeah, but that, it's, I mean, everything about this screams they had to put this whole thing together it, in an afternoon. Essentially, MTV came to Al and said, "We want you to do this concept." for mm -hmm. Al TV. We want you to play the original video and then play your version. And Al yeah, sort right. of complains about it at the top. And that's yeah. kind of what we're, I mean, that is what we're getting. Yeah, and because Al, we lose, think, we lose all of those Al voiceover music videos, which mm -hmm. as we've, yeah. I mean, we missed out on them for the first half of us covering Al TV. And then finally we were getting these full versions and being like, oh my God, this is yeah. the best part of Al TV and like so much of it like even the bits are like 30 seconds you know what I yeah. mean like well, they didn't they didn't want him doing those interviews for this round they were very concerned suddenly that that they were going to get in trouble by these original artists I knew so that that's so interesting it's what I was saying about those things where he was spoofing the video so much and I just was like I can't believe they let him do this because you have to think that it seemed like the wrong person would come back to MTV and be like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> You're letting this man yell over our music videos. <laughs> like, that's not cool. Uh, and I just, but I, I chalked it up at the time to the Wild West of MTV, right? It was just new mm -hmm. and there was no rules really yet. And it was like, at some point they're going to be like, you can't do this. Yeah, and this is and the I point. I guess we got there, where, yeah. And it's strange, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but but after this, the next version of LTV still on MTV was sort of the classic format. Like he was. Yeah. He goes to, back to the interviews. Yeah. Again. yeah this was like this weird one off. Excited about it. But yeah. this thing exists sort of on its own. Al mm -hmm. really did not want this to be the format. Like he, you know, obviously was, was hoping for. Yeah. Uh, a classic Al TV format like he was doing with, with Al music. All yeah. of the stuff from Al Music that kind of crept into here, I feel like he sort of just snuck in as bumpers. It did seem like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 so, and I should say there are two. I'm talking about the him inserting himself in the videos. There are two that did make it in here. There's him adding his head to the video for Friends of P yeah. by the Rentals, mm -hmm. which I think we saw before. I feel like that popped up in a in a Canadian one yeah. or something. Yeah, there, a yeah. lot, a lot of the, that's what I meant. A lot of this is just from yes. Al Music because the ironic one was also in there. Yeah, uh, and a full length version of that one. A full length exists. version of yeah. that, as opposed to just the short version <clears throat> of this, which I was. It's funny, I didn't. I should have. I, I didn't remember seeing the ironic one from a previous. Well, I love uh, it, so it was much. the much music. It's so good. The much music was the for much that music one? year was the uh -huh. one that we could we could not find a version that didn't have everything pulled for copyright. Oh, no. oh, so we got go. like we just got like the tail end of everything because that's when I had to so research probably, cavity yeah. search. Remember, I right, was like, right, right. I think that that's a weird <laughs> yeah. thing at the end of, like, there was so much, right. there, and I was like, we'll see the full one when we get to Al TV. Like, I was so confident that sure. all of that stuff would show back up, and then, yeah. and none of it did really. Yeah. Um, the two things that I distinctly remember, actually, there's three things I remember about watching this live as a mm -hmm. child. The first thing was the sped up polka clips, which are fantastic. Great. Every time one yeah. of those, I didn't take the time to write down every single one of them, but like, if you're a song that's in alternative polka and there was a music video, I mean, they cover pretty much everything. Yeah. I yeah. think, yeah. So like, you you guys get it. Just any any part of alternative polka, it's there. And then I distinctly remember this performance of "Since You've Been Gone," which we're going to dive into deeper because it's very unique to the much Al, or the Al music version yes. that we saw, and we'll dive into that later. Yes. And then I talked about this when we did headline news. But I remember watching this. I remember watching this at my grandmother's house when my aunt still lived with my grandmother and her being very upset 
that <laughs> that there was a video that m- oh yes, me, you did mention her this. her like third grade nephew was watching that was talking about the Lorraine Bobbitt case like mm-hmm. it bothered her greatly <laughs> R.I.P. Lisa uh, but like it, yes. it was she was ve- I remember she was just like I just don't know if that's appropriate and I was like it's weird Al it's fine um, and there's a we'll get into there is a much more blue joke that Al pulls off towards the end of this one that I had my jaw on the floor when it happened yeah but let's start from the very beginning um, just out the gate Letting us know that this is not like the normal Al TV is, I believe this is the first Al TV where they've completely dropped the pirate radio bit. Like this yes. just starts off cold. He's just like, hey, I'm hosting MTV for two hours, everybody. Yeah, and he's outside <laughs> in some like beautiful location instead it, of it like It looks like this gorgeous closet. resort pool with lounge chairs everywhere. He's like lounging at the pool. Looks like a beautiful day. It's like MTV has interrupted him to do this. This this is going to be the Uh, craziest deep cut reference. But what it what it actually reminds me of is the bumpers on the clerks animated series DVD (laughs) Where it's Jay and Silent Bob laying out by the pool introducing. I oddly each, know what you yeah, mean. Like it's them like introducing each cartoon. Oh my God. It is sort of a, a famous local set. Uh, it, it was, it was featured go. in 90210. Okay. Um, some sort of sexy pool scene. What's the name of the hotel? Because he says it and there's a Bellage. joke there. The Bellage. The Bellage. He goes, that's a fancy word that means overpriced. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, we get into the concept of this, as you said, Jeff, is just we're going to play the original video and then we're going to play my video. And yeah, it's literally yeah. every single segment is Al gets a minute of original content. We play two commercials. We might get another 30 seconds of Al polka clip commercial. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's, yeah, yeah. Two, the two videos back to back, <laughs> another quick moment from Al and then back. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, considering how obvious it is, is a bit, I'm surprised it took this long for someone to tell him this was what they should do. I mean, I guess he's now had enough of a career where this makes he has enough. Con- Although they obviously don't even come close to touching all of his videos. He certainly right. could have done a version of this, you know, two or three albums ago yeah. and it would have worked. But um, yeah, it just seems so on the nose that I'm surprised it took till uh, number seven. Yeah. yeah. And Before I they were just like, of, what if we just do the video side by side? I, I couldn't find the article, but I remember someone from MTV like being quoted in, in whatever the press was for this saying, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just obvious. Like this is, this is what he does and this is the best way to showcase his comedy. Yeah. yeah. And meanwhile, <laughs> in the Ask Al, he's like, yeah, that was totally MTV's idea, and I wasn't happy yeah. about it. Well, yeah. he does. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so much less creative for him, yeah. of course. He did, it just right. makes it so, yeah, less to do. Yeah, he like, does, we've already seen that. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. we, we know. Like, we know what he's doing. He, Let's see some other stuff. He does get one of his classic bits in, though, where he eats something weird. Um, yes. He <laughs> tells us, this is before the first commercial break, he tells us we're going to take a three-minute and 15-second break. <laughs> but he suggests that we get a snack and that he's going to have a peanut butter, lime jello and mustard on whole wheat toast sandwich. Um, honestly, in the grand scheme of things that I've seen Al eat during Al TV, this one feels fairly tame. Oh, my God. Um, I mean, I think it was the last one we did where he ate petroleum jelly. Yeah. And I was really <laughs> horrified. I was like, I, we had we were Googling whether or not that was safe. Yeah. And I and I also this is you know what? I've just do- dove into this theory suddenly. I'm guessing that this is officially when Al has entered his vegetarian phase two, because usually there was some type of oh. meat on those sandwiches that he would eat. And this one is just peanut butter, jello and mustard. So yeah. you're right. There were definitely some anchovies in there yeah. and some. Yeah, you, for sure. You're right. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then we get our first commercial break. I didn't get to see too much of the first couple commercial breaks due to uh, lagging issues. <laughs> But I did write down, man, 1996, the year that the Ben Stiller show was popular enough that they could host the VMAs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of Ben Stiller and Janine Garofalo hosting yes. the VMAs. Um, and not God, seeming to be into it. No. No. Well, yeah, that's like the joking the about then, how yeah. not into it they are. I mean, that's um, 1996 yeah. in a nutshell, yeah. isn't it? Like, yeah. this, everyone's. Everyone's not into everything. Yeah, that was that. <laughs> Al's not into his own special. Yeah. Like, we're all no, just. <laughs> no, we're all just. Like, who cares? Who cares? It really was. It really, truly was that, like, 
And again, I've said that I love this time period. I love 94 to 97 (laughs) so much. But it is that, like, no one really got what made Kurt Cobain work, and everyone just concluded it was because he didn't give a shit. And it's like, that's (laughs) that's a really broad generalization. (laughs) Yeah. So everyone's just like, I'm going to be cool and just not give a shit. (laughs) (laughs) And just never really worked out. But we we come back. Al's getting a foot massage. And now it's... (laughs) Now it's the lump gump combo. Yeah, yeah. We started with the t- with Nirvana's. We had the two Nirvana videos side by side, and then now we go into yeah the lump and gump. And then um, we get a Harvey the Wonder Hamster segment. Uh, this is the yeah. first time on Al TV. This already happened on Al Music, but this is the first time on Al TV that we get the marching band track accompanying him. Right. Oh, we get the f- studio Harvey, yeah. the yes. studio version of Harvey, and not just some acapella. Uh, Al and throw it out there. And then instead of injuring Harvey by throwing him or anything, he just shoves him in his mouth and eats him. <laughs> he eats him. So that, I guess you know I what? I laughed out loud. Scratch what I just I said really about did. vegetarian Al because we just watched him eat a hamster. <laughs> he just ate Harvey. <laughs> he was just saving yeah. room. Yeah. No, it was good. I actually was sure because he's on a rooftop. I'm like, oh, he's for sure throwing yeah. this hamster off the roof. Sure. <laughs> and then he just ate it and without breaking eye contact with the camera. And I did laugh. I was like that. I didn't see that one coming. We go to another commercial break. I also watched none of this. This is the last commercial break I didn't get a chance to watch. Was there anything uh, okay, that I yeah. missed that was golden in this one? Uh, no, I mean, there's some really good. I think you probably did see this. I have to shout out. They kept doing a commercial for an upcoming uh, MTV Unplugged with Seal. With Seal. Oh my god, that yes. commercial Seal is, is doing, so good. <laughs> Spend the an hour with Seal. <laughs> oh my god. It's it's presented like a cross between like a late night like phone porn line <laughs> and, and a David Lynch nightmare horror scenario where it's like it's blurring like his face is like melting with mm. these weird filters it, and it's just reverb on his voice going crazy, crazy it also crazy. reminded me weirdly of and I love this commercial I feel like I watch this commercial once a week it reminded me of the pure mood CD commercial as well yes. like, yeah. <laughs> with like the way that it had like the the flare around <laughs> Yeah. Seal. It was yes. Yeah, so I wrote that down for the next commercial break because it comes up uh, it, every it other commercial. Happening. They clearly were really hyping it in that moment. Um, it was yeah. That that really that really tickled me. I loved those. So we cut back to Al. This is where we are in Bill Manspeaker's office. He says, "Here I am in my office," and then he goes, "Well, actually, it's my friend Bill's office, but he has better toys than me." Um, and this is where we get a repeat, but a new version. Of on on Al Music, he did a bit about the Beatles anthology seventeen, but I don't believe it yes. was Paul brushing his teeth that time. <laughs> I think it was something else. And now he's like, "Oh, remember. this track has Paul brushing his teeth." Yeah. Like it was something equally <laughs> mundane. You know, yeah, like, mund- yeah. It was like Ringo flossing or something. It was like a very comparable. I think it was tooth related, and I feel like it was Ringo that time. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, the same joke. I know. I did a double take on it because for a second I was like, "Oh, this is just." When he switched to the desk, I actually had a moment. I'm like, "Oh, this is from the Much Music segment." Well, because there's two or, or I three. I thought he just pulled the footage, but no, it's not actually. There's two yeah. or three bits in this that are brand new shot bits. That mm-hmm. are the exact same concept as the last yeah. album music, and we'll get into yes. the other. Uh, we'll get into my favorite one mm-hmm. shortly. But um, <laughs> then he introduces "Beat It" into "Eat It." Mm-hmm. Uh, which side note? I love this the setup because he does the Beatles anthology joke, and he throws in a great old music industry yeah. joke from the time, <laughs> and he's like, "And now to follow that up, a song by the guy." Uh, 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 or like speaking of uh, the Beatles. Here's a song from the guy who owns their publishing, yeah. <laughs> Michael Jackson. And I loved that as a joke of Michael. Because uh, that was yeah. a big deal when that it happened. Was. It was a really big deal, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And then we get back to Al in the office, and this is where the giant Gene Simmons doll. This segment is so crazy, and I love it it's, so yes. much. Oh, my it's, God. <laughs> it, it feels like this sounds terrible. It feels like the only part where Al is genuinely enjoying the special that he's being forced to make. And <laughs> it's sort of like, well, you know what? If you're going to make me do this, I'm going to play with Matchbox cars. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a toy and alligator and a jeans. Nuts. Yeah, like he's having the time of his life in that segment. He Again, he, for people who haven't seen it, he is literally just playing with Matchbox cars on the desk like a Todd <laughs> like a toddler, like, oh no, there's been a crash. Oh, 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 here comes an alligator. 
to, oh, and it's just, and then yeah, massive Gene Simmons doll stomps them all out. Like it goes on for long enough that it is really amazing. It's, it's out that of he spite, managed to do clearly, this. and I love it's, it oh, so yeah. much. But but it's so joyful. I love it, and just feels so genuinely, truly Al. Like I, I, I honestly, if. I would have watched that every time it came back yeah. around. If he was doing that in between every bit, just him playing with these toys, I would have been all in. So we go into another commercial break, and I want to stress something with these commercial breaks. This is going to be a little bit different <laughs> than past episodes where we talk about commercial breaks. Because I feel uh -huh. like one of my favorite moments in the history of our podcast was when Robert Bacon was on talking about Al TV, and all three of us spent like five minutes talking about the very weird animated wine commercial that none of us had ever seen before. <laughs> yes. I feel like we don't get any commercials quite on that level of like, what did we just watch? A lot of it is more me being like, oh my God, I remember this commercial. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. So during this particular commercial break, the two big ones that I was like, I forgot about this commercial was the early Microsoft internet ads set to the cover so of good. Top of the World. <laughs> um, guys, oh my God. <laughs> brand new, it's all brand new. <laughs> I know, it's a testament to how new the internet is. My favorite part of that commercial is they're showing off what you can do on the internet, and the first thing they show is someone types into their Internet Explorer window the word flowers <laughs> and just an incredibly low resolution photo of flowers appear. Just a picture of flowers. And it's just like, isn't the internet amazing? But and and at the time it really, it really was. was. It yeah. really was. But now the idea that you Google flowers and it's just a picture as if that's supposed to do Look. any good to anyone. I'm gonna sound uh, like the oldest man in the world. Oh, I loved it. And part of it is that now my girlfriend's kids live here and I've been uh, overwhelmed by YouTube reaction videos. <laughs> but watching true. this commercial, I thought, I, you know, I could go back to those days. Like, if we were just like, hey, we're actually going to just, like, low-res the internet back to how it was in 1996, sure. I'd be like, I'm fine with this decision. Sure, bring, yeah. <laughs> bring frames back. Yeah, and like, like exactly. give me aim and get rid of Facebook it. Messenger. Like, I'm I all on board. I can't believe that fax machines outlasted AOL Instant Messenger. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah. That feels crazy. Incorrect. That is um, that is crazy. Yeah. There, no, I, 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 I. Sorry. I just to go back to the commercials <laughs> thing in general again. Last night we were just talking before we started, Matt. Like I think we both watched this pretty late yeah. last night. Like I think I started it at like 11 p.m. So I was watching. It's two hours and it's uninterrupted because the commercials are there. It's the whole thing. So I was just watching like from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m a block of 90s television basically uninterrupted as if I have just been transported back it in time. It was magical. I, I had a drink. I, I finished up my work day. I had a beer. I'm watching this thing. It was the best night I've had in a while. Like, I had such a good time doing this. Like, I just loved every Matt, second of it. I don't know if you know this about me, um, but I've been digitizing these old VHS tapes for months now, and then I yes. take those VHS tapes and I make commercial compilations and upload them to Ooh. YouTube. And when I tell I you that, that those you. videos get like thousands of views <laughs> because there's something that's comforting about being like, you know what? Yeah. I don't know what to watch. I'm going to put on this 50 minute compilation of commercials <laughs> from 1994 and just like zone out for a little bit. Like give me it, yeah. give me it, all the Mentos commercials yeah, I want. Well, all the Mentos Listen, commercials. We'll talk about Mentos in a oh, second. Oh yeah, we but, will. But but even more benign than that, like I can't I don't understand why I'm watching this and I'm watching a 1996 commercial for speed stick deodorant and I'm on my couch just going nice. Yeah, yeah that's great. I love this. Well, that was, this is awesome. Like, it's not even funny. There's nothing funny I, about it. I woke up Barb because I was like, babe, do you remember this commercial? And it was, <laughs> and it was the De Beers diamond engagement De ring Beers. commercial. Oh, that was yeah, like the silhouette, the people, silhouette yeah. people. I'm like, oh my God. Huge. They played that commercial on Nickelodeon. Why would we ever need this on just, Nickelodeon? Just in case. Just in case. No, they were they were playing the long game at De Beers. They were trying to incept that <laughs> idea in kids from a very young age. I love all marriage. The, yeah. All the way down to the two-month salary line. Did you yeah. see that that's actually in the yeah, commercial? Yeah, you can get this for yeah. just two months' salary. Yeah. yeah. Uh, two months' salary. How, how to make two months' salary last a lifetime. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Like, oh, <laughs> man. Like, that is, yeah, for kids that they are incept. They're putting down there, they're like, we need these kids in 20 years <laughs> yeah. to be ready for this. I'm programmed, and yeah. I have been. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and then we get, I, I know that this was in the Al Music, is the 19, uh, 1979 
monster truck tire going down the hill with Elle oh, doing yes. the voice of the person inside, <laughs> like, guys, I'm getting really sick. I'm going to throw up. Help me. Yes. Um, <laughs> and then Al has this line that actually made me laugh out loud where it cuts to him still at Bill's desk and he just goes, hi, I'm Martha Quinn. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this is where he introduces the newest contest. And this is the thing that sucks, right? On a typical Al TV, this would be like, a solid three minute bit and it's just mm. like two quick jokes and then like off to music videos again mm -hmm. but he announces that they're currently running the sperm donor for madonna contest <laughs> but then he stresses oh, he's like look you really want to get these in by tuesday otherwise you're just going to be entered into the give michael bolton a butterscotch <laughs> enema contest <laughs> and, and that's the lead in to like a virgin like a surgeon like, yes, exactly. But, uh, Jeff, I heard you say the magic word Mentos because when we cut back, we're back on the roof of the hotel. Yes. And Al's being accosted by a super fan. Yes. Who he, <laughs> in like the most naked gun kind of way, cuts to the fakest dummy you've ever seen <laughs> getting thrown off the roof of this building. A bunch of people who are not on the roof the entire special just nope. happen to witness it. They, they look they... down as the body's now being run over by a truck. <laughs> and then they stare it out and he just pops a Mintos and they do a Mintos ad, which was yes. on Al Music. It was that someone took the cab before. He was hailing a cab. Right. And someone beat him yeah, to the he cab. Just and he beats the hell out of <laughs> this guy. <laughs> but I love that bit because this is Did like. You prime time of the Foo Fighters doing the Futos the Mentos yes, thing, commercial. Yeah. So. I, I have two two things to say about this segment specifically. So w when I met Al j right after this special happened, I, I gave him mm -hmm. a roll of Mentos and he posed <laughs> with it. So my first photo of Al that I took with my own camera Amazing. is him Is that the one at the King of Prussia Mall? It was, yes. yes. I've seen yeah. your post about that day. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me that, that they had turned the M upside down to read Wentos on the special. Oh. <laughs> and it's true. The other part of this is in the mid-90s, internet was, as you know, just kind of ridiculous. Amazing, yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a Mentos <laughs> FAQ, an unofficial Mentos FAQ, that used to get thousands of hits. <laughs> <laughs> like it was a thing we they broke down all of the commercials and and all that stuff. It's just on like the Mentos website. No, <laughs> it was not. A, it was not this an, is an official unauthorized Mentos. It was at, it was at MentosFAQ.com. Even better. Yes, and yes, it had frames, and yes, my friends and I ran it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Jeff! Of course you did. <laughs> Um, could that man. Very bored college students in mid nineties. I we... this this entire <laughs> that, episode has been full of be, twists and turns. <laughs> that might be one of the most nineties things I've ever heard in my life. You it ran was... a Mentos fan FAQ yes. page. And it was so uh, early in the internet that there are actually, there's a magazine called Internet Underground that used to have a paper magazine mm -hmm. that featured us <laughs> in one of, of their issues. Did. Of course they did. Because <laughs> that's what you did back wow, then. Wow, that, that was, you, you, you were on the cutting edge there, I Jeff. really that was. Is, that's really <laughs> ahead of your time. Really ahead of your time. God, I gotta give it up for all that. 15 that's minutes amazing. back in wow. the 90s. Wow. I love the concept of like a print magazine writing about something yeah. on the internet. It makes yeah. me think of this very dumb bit from uh, the short lived show Undeclared, where yeah. Jason mm -hmm. Siegel's pitching his idea of I'll I'll e I'll mail your emails to you in the mail. <laughs> like, and like that's his business plan is you give me access to your email address and I'll print them out and send them to you as letters. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> like, it's, uh, we do go to some commercials though. Something I had to call out. I don't know what LD Load It was on MTV, but I remember MTV was all in on this fucking crazy animation style Yes, at this point in time. Like this oh, was yeah, like yeah, yeah. right when you were getting like the head and the max on MTV, Li you yeah, were getting Liquid television Flux. was yeah. like, yeah, cutting edge. And so suddenly everything was. And then it like, I guess they stopped the recording head. at some point because then it just awkwardly <laughs> jump cuts to an MTV news, like ending of a report uh -huh. about Woody Harrelson getting arrested for blood. <laughs> He planted four <laughs> seeds for right. marijuana plants, which was one fewer than it would have taken to get him a felony. Yeah. <laughs> 
Which I'm sure was intentional on his yeah. part. It was probably like a symbolic thing. But yes, I just love the random little quick cut, quick cut to uh, him. Yeah, uh, Kurt Loader talking about it. For planting <laughs> I miss one, Kurt. I miss one Kurt fewer so to make it a misdemeanor. Yeah, exactly. Kurt Loader with his dead serious delivery on everything. It's perfect. Oh, God. He was what a the guy. dad at MTV. He really time. was. He really was. All right. Get ready. Get ready, Jeff, because we go to the Crash Test Dummies headline news. Yes, Al yes, makes yes. a quick joke about how <laughs> Headline News is one of the only music videos MTV plays that features the word wiener. Uh -huh. And then he draws <laughs> probably true. He draws attention to the fact that he doesn't bring his accordion to Al TV anymore because he's been learning a new instrument <laughs> called the Komodophone, which yes, you now indeed. own. <laughs> I now own. I am the proud owner of the Komodophone. So guys, for people who can't, see who haven't seen the special and can't see jeff right now <laughs> it is a, a komodo phone it is a an old school phone connected to a toilet seat <laughs> with strings yes. connecting the thing yes and and they it's still okay and it's still is strung up yeah is it in tune <laughs> oh, um, oh, oh my god i could hear it i also it don't think i realized no. it was an old school phone until jeff just held this up like i thought that it oh, was yeah. like a synthesizer neck on the other side <laughs> okay jeff so now how how, how? was that for how? writing all that trivia Al was like, I'm going to give you my prized possession. I'm not going to pay you, but I will give you a Komodo yes. phone, which is as good as money. It trivia somehow. <laughs> Al was cleaning out his garage and literally emailed me one day and was like, if you want anything, come on over. And I was like, the only wow. regret I have is not renting a U-Haul that day. Because I showed up and his entire like backyard was just full of stuff. And he didn't want to keep the Komodo phone? I've lost respect and for I Al. I was like, what is going <laughs> Everything I would pick up, I'd be like, are you sure I can have this? He's like, yes, get rid of it. Like, like it's just going to Goodwill, whatever. And I was like, oh, my God. I don't think they would have accepted the Komodo Imagine phone. Imagine bringing that to Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never worked at a Goodwill, but I have a feeling they would not have accepted the Komodo phone. Some poor employee <laughs> trying to figure out how to price it. What do we charge for this? Oh, my God. <laughs> But yeah, I saw it laying on the ground and I and it sort of was like I was like, what is that thing? And he's like, you know what that is. And I was like, I do. <laughs> and and I it took a minute to place it. And then I was like, I'm certainly taking this. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I mean, not to potentially spoil some other thing you have up your sleeve for the future, but anything else that you got that day that is worth saying? I got like uh, I have the UHF, uh, the blue claymation car from the UHF music video Ooh. where he's playing Peter Gabriel. Amazing. Uh, wow. I, I don't That's know where great. the red car is, but the blue one, I'm I'm staring at it right now. I love that. Very, very cool. Yes. Wow. That's pretty damn cool. But the Komodo damn. phone, certainly I mean, my yeah. favorite. <laughs> that is... That is... I mean, That's what, one day, yeah. some museum is going to come yeah. looking for that. Oh, man. Yeah. Is that be, the next like, thing that Dave, Ethan, and now us have to work on is raising yes. money for a Weird Al museum? Yes, please. It's going to be up in a museum, and on the plaque, it's going to say, on loan from a private collection. <laughs> and that will be Honestly, yours. Honestly, you know what? I just said that jokingly, but there should be a Weird Al wing in the rock and roll museum. I agree. I agree. At or least it's a temporary exhibit. I'm sure yeah. you could like, because they do pop ups and stuff, right? Like they'll yeah. do. We um, got to push for that. I'm going to we'll get David and Ethan on the line and say, hey, that magic that you worked on that star in Hollywood, <laughs> yeah. we need it for an even more noble cause. Uh, I, was, I, I was just say, in, <laughs> yeah. in 2002, the Orange County Fair ran a, uh, a, 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 a museum called the Weird Al Experience. It was 2000 square feet, floor to ceiling of Weird Al stuff. Amazing. And, I ran it, see, and it was magic. Nice. Uh, th see, that's w w you have to be the one to do <laughs> yeah. it, Jeff. I have bad news. No one else is going to do yeah. it. It's All you. Right, you have fine. to be the one well, to do it. You know, the television industry um, is collapsing on itself. We, we, so we, we have job. nothing to provide for it, but we'll <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> no, I'll send you an invoice. It's okay, fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll figure something. I was going to say, when I was just in Los Angeles and saw you guys for uh, the, the Comic-Con panel and for the uh, screening of Weird, oh, yes. John Waters had a pop-up exhibit, mm -hmm. like a, the history of his film filmmaking at um, the Academy Museum, I think yeah. it was. And it was amazing. Al could certainly, they, there's definitely enough of Al's career yeah. at this point that he could do something similar. Mm, for sure. Wonderful.
91 Donkey Lane is a magical apartment complex that contains immense power, but lacks intelligent inhabitants. What is happening? I'm getting texts. Why are we getting a lot of texts? People found out what we did. Oh, dividing Mike Myers into an infinite amount of tiny Mike Myers. Listen to 91 Donkey Lane for free on Spotify or your favorite podcasting app. More at 91donkeylane.com. See you there, you donkeys. As we go to commercial, we do the first, and I'm just going to combine both of these. We get two different runaway train bits. There is yes. absolutely nothing new in these, and it at this point, it almost feels dated and punching down in 1996 to be like <laughs> still dunking on Millie Vanilli and Vanilla Ice and Right Said and Fred. Vanilla Ice and Tiffany yeah, like, and Debbie Gibson. Like, yeah, I was like, yeah, is there really is no one who disappeared from the music scene in the early 90s that we could have gone at at this point? Right Said Fred. Oh, they, it was um, still new. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. I don't. I, were any of those new? I couldn't actually no, place. The, I knew we had seen David Lee Roth. I knew we had seen Millie Vanilli. We definitely and, saw um, Huey Lewis before. We saw Rick Springfield before. Like I, that's right. I just was like, man, there has to have been someone more recent. I mean, yeah, I'm blanking I think right Said now. Fred was probably the, the, the only, most current. Yeah, the most current right one. Said Fred would make sense. Yeah, but and even then, Right Said Fred in popped joke, off in like, 1992, no. so it only been four years. Like. Yeah. You're right. Jeff is right, though. Yeah, it can't be anyone too current or it doesn't make sense. No, like, it has sure. to be someone who's been gone for a few years. But so it could have does, been like that does track. another bad creation. <laughs> you know, like, there was <laughs> How definitely... dare you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So then we get this owl in a tattoo parlor. And man, if there was anything that aged kind of poorly, the idea that it's Al wants right a, now. Yeah, the fact that Al would want specifically a Kennedy tattoo in this day and age is psychotic it's amazing but it's honestly amazing but the reveal of the drawing made me actually <laughs> laugh out loud from my like at my laying in bed with my laptop i laughed out loud when it cut to the tattoo it's so but good. you know what's funny i couldn't tell because I, I i agree again currently it's like oh my god that's just hilariously weird choice but even in the moment in the thing it seems like he's joking where he's like i'm gonna get a tattoo of my favorite person kennedy well, because kennedy and was I perceived as the annoying vj like is even that what it back was? then she was, was considered really yeah. annoying now but she's she like hosting alternative hateful. nation she yeah. had the best music yeah. on her side but like yeah. yeah she was you know she was she was not like the other vjs yeah she was sure. a little unpolished a little nerdy which is and like i was into it yeah well that's like, what yeah. mtv did well though was that like for better or for worse when they were actually playing videos and bringing in vjs you could tell that they weren't really directing those VJs to be anyone but themselves. Yeah. Like even yeah. and I and I think they also didn't do takes. Like Yeah, I, no it doesn't time. seem like I was it. gonna say, because like <laughs> as I'm ripping the some of the tapes that I'm ripping are just like I would just put a blank tape in my TV and record like MTV two all oh, night wow. long just to like catch some <laughs> random shit. And like yeah. There's definitely segments where VJs fuck up bands' names and then correct themselves. Like, <laughs> I know we, we joked about it a while ago when we were doing some of Al's game show type things, like when he did remote control yeah. and, yes. and those sorts of shows. And we said then it was like, I can't believe the way they aired stuff. Yeah, it was just on, it was like, on TV. Yeah, it was just on TV. There's a whole moment in the middle of the episode where the contestants and hosts are debating if the buzzer is broken, <laughs> <laughs> and they don't cut that out. They're like, just like, ah, fine, who nope, cares? Roll fine. with it. Yeah, it's, I, it, I'm like, again, we've said it about these Al TV segments as well. Just this idea at this moment in time, like no one was thinking about archiving anything. But, the sure. idea that anyone would rewatch something was crazy. Yeah. So it was like, oh well, get it out. Who cares? We're filling time. And now. And Gone. But you know what? Now, honestly, I feel like you want to save television from streaming, produce more in the moment, like Weirdness. no edits, weird yep. shit that you just feel I mean, like we you can have debate to the watch. merits of it. <laughs> we can debate the merits of it, but it's interesting that Netflix has found some success in doing live broadcasts yeah. again. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're trying to hype up they, events. They paid an abs like, do you know that Monday Night Raw is going to be Netflix exclusive in January? I did like, not know WWE that. WWE Monday Night Raw will wow. now air live exclusively on Netflix every Monday. Oh my like, God. that's it, it, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> in a way, it's that surprising, and in another way, it's not, because it's like, we all remember, like, it's fun feeling like you gather around well, that's, as a bunch of people to watch something happen in real time. Yeah. It's why we still like concerts and theater it's, and all these it's things. It's why like, I watch award shows. It's like the one time where it's like people actually will be watching the same thing on television at the same yeah. time. Mm -hmm. 
is for that stuff. Otherwise, it's the news. Yeah. <laughs> if we're unlucky yeah, enough, no if we're unlucky enough that something is happening that we all have to watch the news, yeah. or it's like otherwise, yeah, no one's doing uh, live content anymore. It's it's really, I mean, talk shows. I mean, some of that stuff still, but I don't, I don't know. I I totally get why mm -hmm. the pendulum is swinging back and people yeah. are like looking for that sort of stuff again. Um, but yeah, so during this tattoo segment, we also get the Dire Straits uh, original and yeah. parody. And then... Oh, we didn't say, I just like, he gets the Kennedy tattoo, and it, of course, is horrible, this terrible-looking picture of her, and he's like, can you erase it? And the guy's like, that's really expensive. And he's like, okay, well, can you just cross it out? And he's like, yeah, sure, no problem. And then, of course, Al screams in pain through his, like, we'll be right back segment, or introducing uh, the, the Money for Nothing mm -hmm. uh, segment, yeah. slash Beverly Hillbillies. We get those side by side. I also had a moment last night watching where I just, I, you know, just worth saying again, we talked about Money for Nothing plenty on this show. Yes. But watching the original Money for Nothing video again, I just was like, <clears throat> this is one of the weirdest songs yep. <laughs> that yep. anyone has ever made. I, it's blows my mind when I hear something like that sometimes. And I think, like, <laughs> how in the world did anyone think this was going to be a hit? And then it was. Yeah. Um, it's so, so strange. Yes. And we talked about it when we did that episode, but the record version is also so long. It's almost nine minutes long. Oh, my <laughs> God. God. Why? Yeah. It's way too long. Even the video, the, the single cut on MTV that like they show minutes. in the video yeah. is like four and change. I was like, this is too yeah. long, too. <laughs> There's a couple crazy commercials I need to talk about in this commercial break. Yep. break. First is a commercial for women's panties that just show women, <laughs> like, Packing suitcases and watering the plants without their pants on. Yeah. It's such a weird ad. And then the things that I forgot about <laughs> was the elephant stealing a Snickers bar ad. Oh my God. I was like, man, this is scratching a memory bank. Yep. And the yep. A&W root beer football ad where the yes. kids, like I was like, oh my God, I remember this advertisement. <laughs> like I forgot about it for years. Did I watch that and then go get a root beer? Maybe. Maybe. Um, there was another, <laughs> there's Very another A and W one that definitely makes you feel like you need to get a root beer that shit <laughs> airs later. But they, mm. they uh, come back. Al's back on the hotel roof. He's talking about this art structure. <laughs> It's kind of a very quick, weird. You can tell that it's like, oh, we need to film one more segment. Al, just riff about this this weird, like, modern art that's on the roof of this hotel real quick. Yep. Uh, and then we go to the Red Hot Chili Peppers Bedrock Anthem. And yeah. this, is the, this is the thing I most vividly remember is Al goes, okay, I've got a, a minute and 20 seconds before we go to commercial. <laughs> and he performs since you've been gone. But this is what I wrote down was when we watched Al music, we were like, I think he's just lip syncing to the, the album track. The recording, This one yeah. is undeniably live vocals from Al by this pool with yes. the backing yes. track playing behind him. But, like, yes. yep. he's killing it. His dance yep. moves are fucking <laughs> hilarious. Like, yep. it's great. Like, this is – this – minute and 20 second bit might be among my favorite Al TV moments in the history of Al TV because it's just so I mean raw and fun like, yeah I mean it's yeah. no Komodo phone no <laughs> no 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 <laughs> but it is pretty great no certainly not but it, yeah no it is it's awesome to see like I, I'm not sure if he thought it when he was making since you've been gone but that is such a perfect song for him to do a solo version of like just off mm -hmm. the cuff like that like yeah. again they can pipe in the track but generally speaking he hasn't had many of those I think we saw one time a few years back a video of him alone doing you don't love me yes. anymore with like a backing track he was singing yeah. live and there's a backing track behind him but he hasn't had many opportunities there was for these also sorts the of YouTube things in these specials numb thing in, oh the numb one as well yeah. that's true yeah. green and ham Green eggs and ham. Oh God, that's so good too. <laughs> yeah. All right, we get another. <laughs> so good. we get another batch of commercials here. But the first thing that I had to write down <laughs> was that there's this commercial on MTV where they talk about some of the big hits that we can expect to see in 1996, uh -huh. and we get Smashing Pumpkins <laughs> Tonight Tonight, which I've said this before. I'll say it again. My personal vote for the best alternative single released in the entirety of the 90s. Metallica's Until wow, It Sleeps. That's big. Alanis yep. Morissette. You learn. And then probably the biggest fumble on being a huge hit out of the whole thing is Green Day's Walking Contradiction, a song yeah. that I yes. absolutely love, but kind of was a dud of a single. Yeah. In the I forgot it was things. a single. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, wait. That was, that was Green Day coming off of, I, I will always say that I think that Insomniac is probably their best album and one of the best like pop punk records ever made. And they could not made. find their footing promoting that album. But it was coming off of Dookie, which had so many big songs. I yeah. think it was just the curse of that record. Like they couldn't quite 
hit that level. I think that record is more consistent. Um, but yeah, none of the singles on that record really did. Yeah, you and I um, talked about this extremely that's, well. That's my number one Green Day record. I I there's no skips to be found on that record. And like you said, it is cohesive. I like Nimrod, but Nimrod never felt cohesive to me. It just mm, feels like no. a bunch of ideas kind of thrown across an album. <laughs> A whole other podcast, but if you want to talk, you you just said to uh, tonight tonight is the best uh, alternative song of the '90s. I would say that the best pop punk album of the '90s is Insomniac yeah. by any artist. Yeah. No, any artist. I agree. Um, but then we get a. Bu- there we go. We're really putting <laughs> putting it out there. What today. are the guest rankings on that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got what you- <laughs> so many. I have to talk about every commercial we get. This commercial break was my favorite commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> we get this tropical freezes ad where this guy's trying to make specialty drinks for every Just person at a party. Hundred blenders. Yeah, like it's <laughs> absolutely insane. Then we get this Motorola pager commercial that made me laugh so hard because the voiceover's like, I like to be cool. I like to be on top of cool things. And that's why I got myself a Motorola pager. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was all the rage. Then we get this Slim Jim ad that I absolutely remember this specific ad. Like, there's a lot of Slim Jim ads, but yes. I distinctly yes. remember the, like, kids trying to change a light bulb and <laughs> Randy Savage comes blowing <laughs> through the ceiling. Then it's followed by a Frosted Flakes commercial I remember where it's a bunch of kids in the cafeteria and the one guy's got like this like, I don't, is it like a New York accent? He's just like, hey, look at that dork over there eating, the, <laughs> eating his Frosted Flakes. <laughs> the worst accent ever. The worst. And then the last thing we get is a Coolio rock the vote like having a nightmare commercial. <laughs> And I remember these, too. This commercial yeah. played constantly on MTV. Yes. It did. Oh, my God. So many memories. We talked. A great time of just, yeah, again, just imagine Coolio just screaming at you through the TV to vote, yeah. <laughs> yelling at you, and having nightmares about scenarios that come up if you don't vote. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was very aggressive. Here's the craziest <laughs> joke in the entire show, though, is we, we talked about the ironic music video where Al was, like, in the car from Ironic, and then Which it, is just, I, it's, it's so perfect. funny. It's it so, is so perfect. I have to say, it, it is maybe, it's a strong contender for my favorite one of these I have ever seen mm-hmm. him do. Because it matches uh, the video it's seamlessly. Perfect. It's yeah. so wonderful. It's perfect. I also, so like, again, it's the, uh, this video and it's like, it's Alanis is in multiple seats in the car and Al just takes one of them and he's like singing the song so enthusiastically, ironic. And then he like sticks his head out of the car. All this stuff happens in the real video, but then he's fully outside of the car. Like doing a handstand. <laughs> yeah. Like... I thought for a minute, I was like, maybe if there was more, but like I was waiting for him to just get like beamed by a pole or something yeah. like that. Like some horrible carnage happens to him. But instead he just gets back in the car and they're all just singing. Yeah, it's it's perfect. It's That's so well done. So good. But, but then it cuts back to him and he's reminiscing about how him and Alanis used to hang out all the time and now they don't talk anymore. And he literally paints himself as the person you ought to know is about because he goes, I don't get it. We used to go into the back of movie theaters all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Which, for those of you who don't remember the lyrics to You Ought to Know, the lyric is, would she go down on you in the theater? Yes. <laughs> Easily the bluest joke that yes. Al has worked into this particular mm-hmm. special. Oh, it so was impressive. Good. Yeah. It was impressive, yeah. And then we get back to Michael Jackson. We do the bad and the fat comparison. Mm-hmm. And then he gives us our last pr- push before the final segment he goes and coming up next is a video from coolio who i'm told is not too happy with me (laughs) (laughs) and then we get another crazy set of commercials we get this trippy ass commercial that ended up just being an ad for mtv of like a woman's voice talking about the struggles of being a woman in the world while there's like multiple women on like a gurney with different doctors and it's sh- it's literally shot like a david fincher horror movie like it's like a poetry it's, slam somehow like i don't it know was, what was happening yeah. but but it felt it's funny it felt so modern like yes. the sentiment behind it mm-hmm. is the sentiment behind it essentially was supposed to be like believe women yeah. when they tell you something yes. but then it's just a mtv commercial it's like what the hell <laughs> I, yeah I, when it ended i was sure there was going to be some serious like phone number or hotline yeah. or a cause it was just MTV. Just I mean, kudos to MTV for for putting that out there. I I 
appreciated the message, yeah. but I was Cutting edge. stunned when uh, like yeah, they were, I guess I mean, it was just, yeah, like so wonderful. Yeah, yeah, back when they had, was, like things to say. It was a platform, very yeah. weird how it was put together to be mm-hmm. like you just said, did not expect an ad for yeah. MTV. Um, yeah. Then we get a commercial for the Phantom coming out in the, a theater sure. near you. Can't wait! I'm so excited. For that. <laughs> and then my favorite, my favorite thing is that we get only one local ad from wherever this was taped for Kobe Honda, and the picture quality dips like fifty thousand percent. Brutal. It's like yeah. shot on a home, like a big ass box camera that they VCR, rented. VCR, VHS <laughs> camera. And then we go to MTV News. Uh, if you're curious what the news was at the time that this aired, Metallica had entered the Hot 100 at number ten with Ooh. "Until It Sleeps," and to celebrate, they were going to do a live concert on Apple's website. <laughs> That's <So>. right. <laughs> uh, yeah, you had to Which go also to like live edge, by the way. Yeah, live or something. That, was, that must have been very cutting edge at the time. I can't imagine how horrible that stream oh, was. That let, stream me fire up, let me fire up my real player. Yeah. In 1996. Oh my god. Yeah. But then we do the Coolio Amish Paradise. There's a great joke from Al <laughs> where he goes, and if there's any Amish people watching, I just want to say, what are you doing? Get back to work. Um, <laughs> You're not supposed to be watching TV. Uh, Al gets a paper great. cut, bleeds an insane amount. And then the, I think the biggest the biggest bummer is that the tour dates are all just genuine tour dates. Yeah. There's no joke dates to the be first found. time. Yep. The first time where they post his tour dates and they're actually <laughs> where he's playing. Yeah. Um, He's like, well, if we're going to be earnest, I might as well be we're, fully earnest, I suppose. Yeah. We're going to be earnest. I was just, to, to personalize it for a second, I was excited. I can't remember when this airs. It might have already happened. But looking at his tour dates, one of his shows is in Toad's Place in New Haven, Connecticut. <laughs> and I am playing there in like three weeks. Oh, I was cool. very excited. I was like, oh, my God, nice. Toad's Place. You should look for, That's awesome. you should look for some like piece of... There might be some relic. Yeah. That's one of those spots that has like every centimeter of a massive set of walls is covered in old posters so oh, cool. that's a real needle in a haystack yeah, i'm sure get is up there if you find it, it i'll see us. find it take a picture send it to me and i'll post it on our instagram um and then the very <laughs> last thing i don't know if y'all stuck around after the credits uh but beavis and butthead will be coming up right after this episode of singled <laughs> out but that information is brought to us by another relic of my brain that i completely forgot about which was the the MTV Beach House Tiki Man, which was just oh a person in a giant tiki costume <laughs> that would just dance around while, like, on the side of it would be, like, what was coming up next in some voiceover pretending yeah. to be the Tiki Man. Like MTV really was a fever dream of it, the 90s. But it, you know it what? Really like was. Again, I, I, I miss it. Like, I legitimately oh, miss it in, oh like, God, a way that, like, I literally was having this conversation with Barb the other night where we were watching the kids watch YouTube. And I was just like, man, like I every once in a while you have those moments where you're like, has has the progression of technology as a whole actually really killed amazing things? And like that, I think of like the free spirit of MTV, like the Mm -hmm. way that like the John Henson era of talk soup, like this, these like weird, low budget, like. But we're on just having television, yeah. like yeah. everything's one take. We're not taking it too seriously. Like yeah. that's that's like what YouTube is now. But like YouTube, YouTube doesn't like it's not as impressive on YouTube because anybody can do that. Like yes. anybody can sit in front of the computer and do it. The idea that like a major network was airing yeah. it is what made it so strange. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, it's like watching music videos on YouTube like on the surface is objectively better yeah it's easier you can just it's find easier, what you want yeah. and watch and it's it a you higher don't have quality to. like and it's a higher quality all these things are true but also like you know things that are charming are often not perfect yeah <laughs> that's what makes <laughs> yeah. them charming and watching mtv and sitting there and waiting for the thing you wanted to come on having no idea if it would ever come on yeah mm-hmm. Well, was such a huge part of the charm. And then when it did, you were like, oh, my God. Like, it was just so exciting. Well, you won. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, like, look, I'm going to pat myself on the back here a little bit. But I think that with Geekscape and specifically, we're getting closer and closer to the holiday live stream. Like, Mm -hmm. my vision every year when we do this 24-hour live stream is, like, I want this to feel (laughs) like UHF. I want this to feel like Wayne's Mm -hmm. World. And I'm realizing, like, man, old MTV did feel like UHF in Wayne's yeah. World. Like, it it did feel like the entire structure 
was mm -hmm. like eight people who were just throwing things at the wall and hoping for the best. Because <laughs> yeah. even when you think about the animation stuff like Beavis and Butthead, it is shoddy animation compared mm -hmm. to like the new Beavis and Butthead, right? Like now sure. we're doing these new seasons and they're being animated in computers and it's got like this smoothness to it, but it's not as charming as like, like when they're, you're watching it and they're like dancing in their living room <laughs> and you can tell that Mike Judge just drew three versions of them uh -huh. <laughs> in three different parts of the room and just made it move quickly enough that it's like kind of jumpy and shoddy. Like, like there's just, there's just something that's like missing in that charm of how, yeah, how scrappy it used to look. <laughs> like, yes. Well, no, it's definitely true. It's definitely true. I mean, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I grew up at a time where I got to watch it like that. Yeah, it's really all very am. corporatized now. And it is. It is. And we're yeah. kind of Boring. nearing yeah. the end of these MTV experiments. I feel like we've only got three, two or three more left to go at this point. I think there's three more, and, and only one of them was on MTV. Oh, mm, the final two, if I'm re remembering correctly, uh, ended up on VH1 somehow. Oh, okay, yeah. So we have we have Al TV with Running with Scissors, mm -hmm. Poodle Hat, and Straight Outta Linwood. That's it. He yeah. did ten yeah. of these total. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, you might be right because this one was a two hour one. Running with Scissors mm -hmm. is a two hour one. Poodle Hat and Straight Outta Linwood are hour long Al TV specials, wow. which feels like that. With it's, commercials and everything, has time for maybe three music videos, two yeah. interviews, and not much else. So mm -hmm. I feel like the next time we do an LTV is probably the last time that we're talking about the authentic golden age, what you remember LTV yeah. being. Um, and then, you know, we'll get these very quick, <laughs> these quick, I guess, VH1. <laughs> we'll find out when we watch potentially mm -hmm. VH1 produced LTV specials yes. for like arguably two of his least promoted albums at the time yep. <laughs> like, yeah certainly true certainly so true. yeah uh, uh jeff though before we wrap up obviously we always have to ask do <laughs> you got any <laughs> updates on show gals that you want to share with the audience any minute now we're actually we're we're minutes away from submitting to some film festivals yay <laughs> oh that's awesome then hopefully we'll have an announcement at some point that is actually worth announcing <laughs> how's that that's that's great well, i know that's you great. know that we'll be happy to promote that whenever that happens i'm sure you'll be back on in just a few weeks when we get around <laughs> I, I have things to say yeah <laughs> i have more things to say <laughs> about oh more of things. course yeah well i'll i'll follow up with you on hey what do you want to talk about in this next batch? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you can judge me for it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. No, yeah. I was very excited that someone actively wanted to do an LTV as opposed to when we normally have to chase someone down. So stay tuned. You got us good, man. Komodo phone. Yeah, yes. that's, this one, that's legendary this one stuff, man. may not wow. be the most spectacular of the LTVs, but it is very special. To it me. is a special LTV. But it's again, I said it before. I had such a good time watching this. Yeah. I had a blast. And I, you know what? I feel like it's probably the LTV. I'm going to distinctly remember the most because it is the most different from every other yeah. one yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's true. It's true. Other realtors have vacant homes. At Pest Properties, ours come occupied and ready to invest. Looking to relocate your larvae? Try the Petri Residence. This rustic home features thousands of crevices to squirm in through, vaulted ceilings for our wall crawlers, and an outdoor bird bath teeming with mosquito eggs. So kick up your six hairy legs and sign today. Before pests move in, Terminix it. With over 95 years of experience, we'll help keep your home off the pest market. Visit Terminix.com today. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 